Elsewhere, American Apparel's share price has soared since the company's board announced it was firing controversial founder and CEO Dub Chani. He has been the subject of multiple sexual harassment suits and was under scrutiny from immigration officials over alleged problems with his employees' documentation. Um, there is a connecting thread, of course. These are all stories about having the right people in place at the right time. Steve Cadogan joins us. He is the CEO of Cadogan Talent Ventures. He was previously a VP at LinkedIn, which recently launched a job search app that claims over 40% of its users are on mobile devices looking at jobs on the site. Steve, welcome. Thank nice you. to see you. Let's just start off with a couple of those stories here. Firstly, um, LinkedIn. You are of LinkedIn initially. You've moved on to your own venture here. But 40% of people are now on mobile devices. This yes. is a very different job market to the one I grew up in. Yeah, where candidates are spending time is totally changing. The, they're using their mobile devices if you're showing up for an interview and they've changed your interview schedule for example you can use your mobile device to find very quickly who's the new person on the interview schedule for example mm. and you have very easy access and information is changing so quickly people want the ability to be able to find it and so the challenge for uh, organizations hiring talent is to be in the places where candidates are spending more and more time and they're not spending time on the websites they're spending more time online and you've, they've got to find ways of being more relevant well uh, hang on um, I have the job I'm offering the salary shouldn't they be coming to me are you telling me gen wires are so fickle that they just wait to be sought out by companies that need staff well, that's a great question, Jeff, and as you just pointed out in the story that you uh, just covered around this huge settlement around concern around companies colluding for talent in the Valley, what we're finding is people are having to, it, the war for talent is so intense in Silicon Valley right now, everyone is looking for an edge. And so if I can be more relevant on a mobile device, maybe I use it to communicate to my current employees. Maybe I want the mobile device to be used by my employees to talk about how great it is working at my company. So it's an incredibly new source of information. I think the struggle for companies is to figure out how do I leverage this new tool and this new device in ways uh, because we've not been used to interacting with candidates that way. How deep is the knowledge pool in the industry? Because it seems as though you've got social media, which is relatively new. So just how experienced can people be in terms of having a skill set around well, Twitter and Facebook and some of these that's, different services? It's a great question and it's a great observation. And I would say living in the Valley for the last 20 years or so, it's probably one of the few places in the world where there's negative unemployment. You can't fill jobs fast enough. There's usually about 10 to 15 percent of the jobs in organizations in technology right now where you just can't find the talent. Mobile technology is a very rare skill right now. So those of you who have kids, you want to start getting them using the mobile devices more frequently. Moms are going to hate me for saying that. But getting them more comfortable with these new skills and new programming capabilities is, is not some, a skill that's very plentiful. You're absolutely right. And trying to get people more comfortable representing themselves on social media is another new challenge, I think, for organizations, especially executives. Most executives don't necessarily have a robust LinkedIn profile or spend time tweeting or updating their status and talking about what they're doing on social media. However, candidates today, if they're interested in technology, want to join a company where the organization leadership understands how to use these tools. And if you have no social profile, you're sending a signal to your candidates that you're not necessarily conversant in this new language. Um, we're in a, a period where there is a lot of M&A activity, and we talked a bit about um, cultural integration once this Alstom deal finally goes through. This is an area that you've done quite a lot of work in. Um, just give us sort of three pointers here how companies can better manage the transition after a deal. Great. Uh, so the first thing is if you're an executive and you just acquired a company, what you have to realize is nobody in that company is going to deliver any value to you until you answer a couple of key questions. Do I have a job? Is my boss changing? Are you relocating this facility? Are you going to lay off my co-workers? These are Maslow's hierarchy of needs and a lot of organizations start um, running around talking about what a great deal this is on paper, how great the market's going to like all the financial upside of this. Mm. But they fail to realize that that upside is going to be realized on the backs of the employees and the work that they're doing. So the faster that you can get 
the uh, attention on the things that they're worried about, the quicker they can start delivering value to you. Because that's really what you want in acquisition, is to take those assets and to grow them and one plus get a one plus one equals three scenario. But what's happening is people are forgetting that the workers need their answers to their questions before they can actually deliver value. Um, what's the um, smartest question you can ask when you go for a job at LinkedIn or Apple or Google or one of these new exciting um, social networking companies? You know, if you sit down and you've got the, the boss the other side of the table and you want to look really clever, what, what, just give us some insight on maybe two or three things that you could ask that would make you look really smart. Um, uh, what I like to do is I always like to put the interviewer on, um, on the spotlight, if you will, and say, if I'm an investor, why would I want to invest in you, not only now, but in the future? Because I think a fear that candidates have is that the organizations, especially technology organizations, maybe have a one or two year horizon in front of them. What are you doing to win the next five years, the next 10 years? Because I think this whole concept of built to last, sometimes I worry organizations are built to make a short term profit and then someone's going to change their business model. Reid Hoffman, the chairman of LinkedIn, was once asked a question as we were growing LinkedIn. He was asked, oh, Reid, who's your biggest competitor? Who do you worry about? You're in this recruiting business. You've got professional networks. What most concerns you? And his answer captures, I think, the challenge of technology companies today. His answer was, I'm worried about the company that hasn't been created yet or a technology that's going to completely undermine what I'm working on. Just, uh, I know Karen wants to come in here, but I've got a quick follow-up here because um, there's one question um, uh, that a lot of people answer in a certain way, and I think sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't, but I'd welcome your thoughts on this. So quite often you'll be asked by an interviewer, where do you see yourself going in this organization if you join us? And the whip crack answer is to say, I'm going to be in your seat, I'm going to take your job. Is that a good answer or do you just look like a precocious jerk? <laughs> I think there's a better answer. One answer would be I want to deliver the most value I can possibly deliver for you as fast as I can. And that doesn't put anyone uh, in a position of being threatened. Let me take this from the employee's perspective. What's the average salary? Because we're talking about high valuations on mega mergers. You've mentioned a skill shortage. Our average salary is much higher than they should be at this point. Yeah, so one of the interesting trends that I saw over the last three years in Silicon Valley is I moved from checking my benchmarks of salary data from once a year to every week. And the vehicles and the tools being used in compensation are changing dramatically, which puts a, a big burden on organizations to be able to explain their compensation package. For example, the big currency in the Valley is stock options. And that have those have changed into restricted stock units. And the difference between that is it's a promise to give you shares versus a option to buy the shares if the stock goes up. And having to be conversant in these new tools is a big challenge. But to your point, the market is white hot. I was visiting a few uh, VCs last week, and one of the things they told me was they're shocked at how early stage companies before Series A funding are able to pay the same amount as Series C funded startups. And that, that, that whole take a pay cut to join a startup is not the case anymore. I was always told that you never talk about money in the interview until you get to the very end, or maybe it's the last interview you have. Because if you talk about money at any stage in the early interviews, it just sounds like you've come there for the money rather than for the enthusiasm for the company and the fact that you're driven by the business idea and so on and so forth. Does that still hold? It sounds like it doesn't from what you're saying. It, it does hold, Jeff. It definitely does hold. But keep in mind, a lot of the students that you're interviewing today at universities are graduating with these huge loans. They're graduating with this huge huge amount of debt. So it is relevant in the conversation, but you're absolutely right. As an organization, you want to sell the purpose, the mission, mm. the future, the, the value you can contribute to the organization. And at LinkedIn, when I was competing against Google, for example, I would say, come here, we're helping people find their dream jobs. Is that something that motivates you? And then we could talk about compensation. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you in. Best Thank of luck with the venture. Steve Cadigan joining us, the CEO of Cadigan 
talent ventures and I'll throw this one out as a, a squawk box email in this morning love to hear from you do you have any interesting job interview experiences that you'd like to share with us this morning either it's gone tremendously well it's been terribly embarrassing or you have something else that you'd like to discuss with regard to the interview process what is the if you're a recruiter what's the dumbest question uh, that you've heard in a recruitment interview or indeed the best and if you went for that interview you. Did you have one of those dry mouth moments where you just couldn't think of anything clever to say, so you didn't say anything at all, or, or, or perhaps you did say something and regret it ever since? I think that's worse, the stupid response, isn't it?